In this episode, Kate and David talk about the many languages and logos that have appeared in the Zelda series. Welcome to another episode of another Zelda podcast. My name is Kate Fisher, and I am one of the hosts of the show, along with David Geisler. How are you, Dave? I'm well, Kate. Thanks for asking. I wasn't really wondering. It's just being <laughs> polite. <laughs> well, fine. So we are we are back in action. Um, today's episode, we are talking about uh, languages, logos, symbols, emblems, however mm-hmm. you want to call mm-hmm. it. Before we get into the nitty gritty of all that, though, I think we have some listener feedback oh, yes, yes. to talk about, oh, which is always super fun to do. We've been inundated, so I'm going to hit these pretty quick, but yeah. it's really, really cool and really exciting. Um, so uh, real quick, Kate, I'm excited about today's episode because this is another one of those, maybe a bit like our three goddesses where I'm, I think I'm going to learn some things today. Teacher Kate learns y'all. Well, you know, when we started this show, we knew that we were going to do like, oh, let's do deep dives on dungeons and let's do uh, deep dives on characters. But a category that has come up that I never would have expected are these kind of obscure teach the other person episodes. (laughs) You know, like when we did Evolution of Art Styles was a little bit that way. Certainly Hyrule Fantasy, I felt like I was able to bring a story to you. When you were talking about three goddesses to me, it's, it's fun to once in a while for me to also be a fan of the show and be, you know, like I'm learning from you today is what will happen. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. It's fun to have that once in a while. I like it. All right. So actually uh, real quick, we got a tweet back from our last episode uh, already. Uh, Harrison R. Fox tweeted us and he said that uh, in response to our side quest episode from two weeks ago. Yes. He said Majora's Mask has some great side quests. (laughs) Getting paper for the hand in the toilet is a personal favorite. (laughs) And uh, when when we saw this, you said to me. Doesn't that happen in Skyward Sword? And I said, yes, it definitely does. In fact, it happens very early on in Skyward Sword, doesn't it? It happens at the school. I in the believe. training academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at Hogwarts, I think. Yes, exactly. That's where it happens. Mm-hmm. And um, no, it is actually a throwback to Majora's Mask and also the hand in the toilet and or well, depending on how you want to interpret it. But mm. let's face it, it's a toilet. Um, uh, also appears in Oracle of Ages, I believe. Okay. A little sprite graphic. Our good buddy toilet hand. <laughs> you know, our best friend. Now, yeah, I, I can't recall what happens in that side quest if you fulfill the hand's needs. Oh, in Skyward or in Majora? Oh, any Majora? of them, really. Majora, I think you do something awkward, like you give the pers- that hand a piece of paper, but it's actually kind of an important piece of paper that you need. Yeah, I thought it was the same in Skyward Sword, too. I remember maybe like a letter or something. Tell me about it, yeah. Oh, that's, gosh, oh, that's I it. don't remember. That's about what I remember, too. <laughs> I don't remember it being like very significant, so I don't think it was a huge deal. It was just like how funny that that happens in more than one game. And I wouldn't have known that that's a reference because... I think everyone, if you've listened to like one or two episodes of this podcast, I frequently bring up how frustrating Majora's Mask is to me. I'm going to try it again, I swear, because I'm I'm sure we'll review it at some point. I'm going to have to do it. Yeah, I think season two Majora's Mask review is inevitable, especially now that I have a Majora's Mask cartridge again. I don't know if you heard uh, two episodes ago how uh, Scott Clark from The Gaming Outsider sent me a cartridge. Yeah, I saw that. Crazy. Very Crazy. cool. Very I, kind of I know I have one and it's probably dusty mm-hmm. and uh, well, we'll play <laughs> it origi- in the dirt a couple times. <laughs> we'll play original cartridge Majora's Mask sometime probably this winter or something like that for season two. And that'll be a lot of fun. So Harrison R. Fox, at Harrison R. Fox, thank you very much for that tweet. I have another tweet here from John uh, Mastandria. And he actually tweeted us a while ago, but I kind of wanted to read it. He uh, said here, so he's John underscore M-A-S-T-A-N-D-R-E-A. And back in August, he said, just started listening to your podcast and as a huge Zelda fan and someone who loves to write and cook, you guys are always playing in the background for me. The two of you are so engaging and entertaining to listen to. Thanks for the content. So cool. I was so happy that he said thanks for the content. Because, yeah, it does take a little bit of effort to make this content. That's Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work for me to sit in my dining room <laughs> And talk at a table for, you know, up to three hours. It's pretty (laughs) exhausting. Uh, So I appreciate that you guys appreciate all the work that I personally do. That's very kind, John. (laughs) I actually got in a little bit of a tweet conversation with him and asked him, oh, do you have any ideas for shows? And he had some ideas, which we put into our notes. Then I 
just for the fun of it, said, what do you normally cook? And he said, lots of breakfast food. <laughs> awesome. Me too. So usually John must be listening to us in the morning and that's fantastic. Hopefully none of my like random shouting or anything like that has scared him. Uh, <laughs> I listened to, I listened to a different podcast and the running joke through that one is that one of the guys on there yells, oh my God, it's burning every once in a while. Uh, because someone like wrote in and was like, I listened to you while I cook. Can you please remind me to check on my food because I get lost in your podcast <laughs> and so every once in a while they go oh my god it's burning <laughs> so uh if if he needs us to do that as well i'm sure we could we could help him out yeah we actually have one more tweet from last week's episode and uh richard gill tweeted us and he is neo oh this is a hard oh what's this we got f- f- oh, fist pumps in the air yeah i'm celebrating i saw what i saw what they said and oh I'm happy richard about said it. you saw it in the notes here so uh so neo guidian and N E O G W Y D I A N said, and at another Zelda pod, loved the whole Terrytown side quest um, in Breath of the Wild, even just for the music. Yay! This person is on my team. Oh, Richard. Love that music. Nice, nice. Fantastic. I would listen to it. I, I was listening to it. While I was playing it, obviously, the other day. And I was like, I got to listen to this like while I'm driving one day. It would probably make me a little less stressed out on my commute. So if you're uh, adventurous in, um, um, if you're adventurous in uh, Breath of the Wild, or th- and on iTunes, there are a couple people that have done like piano covers of the entire I soundtrack. I have seen that. I found this. So there's one, uh, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a group out there that uh, does the piano version and a piano flute version. And it's I found nice the to piano listen. flute version. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to subscribe to that. I subscribe to it as well. Uh, maybe we'll find out who they are, but I think I'll listen to Terrytown that way. Yeah, do it. Um, also, we have some, oops, I bumped the mic here. Um, also, we have a couple reviews that I want to talk about real quick. Oh my gosh, we're just, it's almost getting to the okay. point where we can't keep up, but it's such, that is the, that is the best treat in the world best problem to have so yeah even calling it a problem is 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 tricky so uh let's see here lord demos uh uh, messaged us on uh, itunes and said amazing show that i find myself binging on definitely nice to hear the passion from the gate of for the games through the voices of the hosts would love to see a pic of a of the cat (laughs) perhaps covered in raptor paint oh milo he's been pretty quiet recently yeah he's walking around but he's not really talking as much this time well we have a larger crew here we have co-producer leona lou here running sound for us this time and maybe the larger group of people it's it's the three of us maybe that's very socially anxious scared him away just a little bit yes it's true that's very possible uh okay another uh review that we got on itunes which is super super great was from carson 0412 they said great show you guys are really great at giving a fan's perspective on the series this is exactly the kind of zelda podcast i've been looking for thank you to thank you to you too for putting in the time and effort to give this show to us keep it up more more recognition. That's so, so great. Nice. That is Lovely. wonderful and very exciting. And I mean, certainly it is a joy and a pleasure for us to make this show. It is not a burden, but thank you for recognizing that it does take a little bit of effort. Yeah. And thanks for telling us and other people about it. Cause it makes us feel happy to it's true. make other people happy. Now today we're going to be talking about the, the logos and languages that are across many of the Zelda games. Yeah. Before, we're going to get nerdy. Going to get nerdy. Before we get into that, I have just, we did a little Instagram poll um, asking people about some of their favorite Zelda games. Okay. And so I want to talk about that. Works on my machine quickly said, number one, Twilight Princess. Number two, Ocarina of Time. Number three, Super Smash Brothers Melee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. I think I would agree with the first two. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Tyrone A. Patton uh, on Instagram said, I think everyone should play Oracle of Seasons, which, as I said last week, Leon and I are playing through. I, I say we're playing it because I don't play it without her and we're both doing the puzzles together. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like every couple Super evenings we boot it up. Actually, we bring it up on the Retron 5 and play it on the TV. Cool. And um, I am loving Oracle of Seasons right now. I purchased ages back in the day when the two came out mm-hmm. and I thought oh ages back to the future time travel I'm gonna love that who wants to deal with seasons that's gonna be boring this game's phenomenal so far <laughs> I'm loving it I can't wait for us to review Oracle awesome. of Seasons probably in season two okay I think everyone should play Oracle of Seasons Tyrone says the dungeons are crafty and the changing seasons device really builds the world and story Link's Awakening is another gem but mainly because I found it to be fun and funny with some dungeons that really proved challenging so Tyrone here clearly has a thing 
thing for the handheld games. Yeah, yeah. And the early I'm, handheld games. I usually prefer the console. Uh, I do agree with him on the humor of Link's Awakening. I remember specifically talking about that, like the dialogue and stuff was funny mm-hmm. in that one. So that part I liked too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then uh, Ark, Ark Lighter, A-R-K-L-Y-T-E-R over on Instagram said, uh, it, again, it, talking about favorite Zelda games, it's hard to play faves since I love so many of them. But here goes. Breath of the Wild is number one, Twilight Princess 2, A Link Between Worlds, number three. I think those are some good picks. Mm -hmm. I have not yet played A Link Between Worlds. I have not either. No. Well, I think neither of us have a 3DS right now. So maybe in a year or something, we'll get some like used 2DSs and just to play this game and Mm -hmm. it'll be good enough. Apparently it's a great game. It was kind of the predecessor to Breath of the Wild in that it was the first one that was starting to go back to the non-linear dungeons and stuff like that. Okay. Apparently, in a link to the pa- or in uh, a link between worlds, um, you can play the dungeons out of order. You can get items out of order. Cool, it's pretty fun. My goal is to play every single game throughout, like in the course of this podcast. We're gonna get there. Yeah, we're definitely gonna do it. I think there are so many that I haven't played, and I feel like a I oh, feel yeah. like a sham hosting this podcast. Kate, this is a teaser for the next two seasons, but we have plans to not only play every single Zelda game as these review episodes. We have uh, next week is gonna be a review episode of Minish Cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to just do all reviews so quickly. We want to space them out a little bit. Right. But eventually, yes, we're gonna play all twenty Zelda games, including Four Swords Adventures, probably even Four Swords. But then I also have plans, and we've talked about this a little bit, to play some Zelda likes, like Beyond good and evil uh star fox adventures other games that clearly were inspired by zelda Mm -hmm. and i tried to be zelda and i think that we'll speak about those games we won't review those games but we'll speak about them in the ways that they are similar and different to zelda games so it'll still be a very zelda focused episode when we do those games but i think in a couple years here we are going to be like seasoned players yeah it's going to be awesome i already have played two games that i've never played before so that's great it's going well. And, and here I am playing Oracle of Seasons right now, which I probably wouldn't have sought out if we weren't doing the show. Yeah. So anyway, uh, last but not least, Miss Lizzie over on Instagram, who was our very special guest in episode 16, wherein we spoke about some of our favorite uh, shrines yeah. in Breath of the Wild. Uh, she said, very similar to Arc Lighter, she said, Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild, Link to the Past. Okay. Link to the Past is for you and I a bit of a dark horse. Yeah, I would not be able to leave Twilight Princess out of my favorites. Fair enough. Fair enough. A lot of people love Link to the Past out there. I can't wait. I've said this. I said this in episode 17 that I am excited to give it a new. I didn't like it the first time I played it. I think that that might almost be sacrilege. Everyone loves it so much. <laughs> so I can't wait to give it a fair shot. You're again. allowed to have your own opinion, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, dang okay. it. Okay. And Breath of the Wild Ocarina of Time, super cool. Kate. Yes. So um, this was inspired. This topic was inspired by many uh, pieces of feedback that we got. People wanting to talk about yeah. many, like whenever someone messages messages us on Facebook or something, um, oftentimes I'll kind of ask like, "What's ideas for new topics?" Because mm-hmm. sometimes we get really cool ideas. Yeah, this was absolutely. kind of one of them. But then you also came up with the idea too that you kind of wanted to get into this. And I, yeah, I kind of want to get more into the language too, because well, um, yeah. We were already going to talk about like the symbols and emblems, and there is some of that. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information that really, really went into the symbols and emblems. It's fine. Um, so I was like, well, why don't I look up like the language itself too? Because that's in and of itself kind of symbols. I mean, mm-hmm. they are absolutely written out. So yeah, I kind of got into that as well. And once I started researching, I was like, this is really interesting. You slacked me. You were like, oh my gosh, this goes deeper than I thought. And I'm really excited. Yeah. I couldn't believe how much like effort went into this. Like some of the stuff, like uh, language pieces and parts that change throughout the Hylian languages are, it's crazy. And I would maybe Maybe take it with a grain of salt. This is information that I found on the internet, you know, so hopefully it is actually true. Some of this is wiki-esque. Some of this is posts. It may not necessarily be coming from the official Nintendo website, so so to say. Some of the stuff I'm like, is this actually a thing? Um, A lot of it you you can, I think, is evidence that it is true. But Let's speak about it as if it were true because we've just put the disclaimer down that this is stuff collected on the internet. So this is what I have read at least in it, which would be really amazing if it were the case but um can i start you off with a question yeah i know you're technically hosting and i'm so sorry no uh what was the first time in any zelda game where you noticed and cared that there were like languages present 
Um, so I played Ocarina of Time. That was my first game. Mm. And I noticed that it, there, there's stuff written on the, well, signs, first of all. The signs so have, you we, see have, the signs. Yeah, little shapes. And they open up your eyes. And then, um, isn't, no, I guess not. I was going to ask if there's stuff written on the gossip stones, but that's just the eye logo, which I can go into that as well, actually. Mm. Um, but maybe it wasn't until Wind Waker when the definition got high enough that we really started to be able to see what we could see. Yeah. You know, see one to one. And other characters were speaking in a different language that you obviously could <gasps> not read. That was the first time in Wind. That's the first time that happened, I think, in Wind Waker. Yeah, I yeah. think Wind Waker was the first time that happened. We were like, oh, "What's going language. on? What you know? What? Why are they speaking a language that is not understood by other people? Like, yeah. if if there's only one, I mean, there are different, you know, quote unquote races or or creatures or you know mm-hmm. different tribes, so to speak, but they all seem to speak the same." language for the most part. There's a little bit of that Star Wars thing where like everybody says, speak, well, Star Wars is getting away from that a little bit. Like everyone speaks English, but it's, right. I guess I, that's a bad example because these days now they've gotten a little bit better about that. But anyway. But Wind Waker was weird in that there's just this, this text going across across the screen and you're like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that? So we will get into what that Ooh. is. Um, so I guess maybe we should start there is the Hylian languages. Yeah. So, um, interesting. Yeah. I saw that there were, there's at least four versions of the Hylian language and it's really interesting that it kind of goes along with, I think the, you know, the technology is that has advanced in the video games. It makes sense of how the languages are applied. For example, um, some of these languages can only be or are more used to write into stone or something like that. They're more rigid. And that makes sense for Ocarina of Time yeah. where they did not have the, you know. Well, that goes two ways. Like um, in game, it kind of works because you would be chiseling these things into a stone. So that would make sense. That wouldn't be a particularly ornate mm-hmm. typeface, so to speak. But um, also, I think f- meta style outside of the narrative of the game. <laughs> there just weren't enough pixels on some of those textures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas some later examples, it's more like it looks like it would was painted or something. You know, mm-hmm. it's obviously there's more to the graphics. So um, that kind of was a cool parallel, I thought, um, along with the languages. So I guess let's start at the beginning. Um, so we have the ancient version, which, you know, the timeline Skyward Sword yep. is the first game in the timeline so that would be the ancient version of hylian um kate are the characters in wind waker speaking that language yeah oh oh i'm so excited <laughs> keep going you spoiled it oh no yeah. no yeah so that's yeah that is what they're uh speaking um in wind waker so yeah the ancient version it can be translated into english um it is used to speak to the goddesses. That's how they would speak to the goddesses in the ancient. The three Hylian. golden goddesses, would you say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's I didn't find a ton of information, but that's basically it. Is that's what Skyward Sword was using, um, and then you move to the old Hylian, which is where you get into Ocarina. So this is the one that would be carved into signs, carved into stone, kind of written out that way, as opposed to like written on paper or anything else or pr- painted okay. with a brush. So that was mostly used for the carving. Um, and what's interesting mm. on that one, I'm sorry, my cat is going to start playing with his jingle toy, so there will be jingling. Okay. Coming through. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, there, there it is. is. It's um, starting. So <laughs> the old Hylian, what's interesting about that one is that there are no spaces between the words. So if you notice, oh. it's, it's really long. Uh, yes, you're right. So you, you only do spaces between sentences, which is really interesting. Um, so it's it, yeah, long lines of the uh. language in Ocarina, if you notice that. Which I probably didn't notice any of this, and I'll have to go back and kind Pardon of look me. at everything. In Ocarina? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Cool. So where where does ancient language happen in Ocarina? Maybe on graphics of things? On, like, signs? and. Um. Well, the, no, ancient, you mean in Wind Waker? I was, yeah. Wait, are we talking about Wind Waker or Ocarina? <laughs> this one is Ocarina. <laughs> okay. So yeah, oh, yeah, I'm so, so confused. Ancient is Skyward Sword, yeah. and then Old Hylian is Ocarina. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Got yeah. it. Got it. So got it, got it's it. slightly different. I don't think there's anything in Ocarina that comes up where they can't understand each other, right? Right. Can I believe not. Okay. 
So that makes sense. Oh, yes. Um, I don't think there's anything in the narrative where a character is speaking a different language. Yeah. And, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So then we get to, uh, Hylian, what is called just Hylian, um, mm-hmm. or Helian, if you, if you want to go that Jillian. way. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's Jillian. Jillian. Yep. That sounds right. Um, and what I read is that Hylian replaces old Hylian in the child timeline. So this gets real complicated now. Um, it's basically in Twilight Princess. So it's the language in Twilight Princess. Yeah. Which is a little swoopier if I recall. Uh, yes, yeah, it's a little more curved. It's yeah. definitely not as rigid as Ocarina for obvious reasons. Tall, thin um, characters too, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is made up of individual letters, uh-huh. uh, which you can find online. You can like write your own name and in, in There are Hylian. some typefaces. I definitely yeah. downloaded all of them when I was designing our graphics. Yeah, I absolutely. think we use old Hylian in our uh, char- in our character set right okay. now on our graphics, yep. just for the fun of it, because they're very simple, just for the fun of it. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, that looks right. Um, from what I can remember. Um, (laughs) and then this one, so yeah, individual letters instead of like a symbolic script. So I also read that this is more English based than Japanese. So that is actually really interesting. Individual letters. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like I said, this stuff is fascinating to go into. Um, that, that one does put spaces in between words. Mm Mm-hmm. I think with that, it's almost one. To, I think it's, it's kind of just one. like decode. It's like exactly use your decoder ring. It's and really it's, this character is an A. This character is an S. This character is a T. Right? I kind of need to like look this up. Is this one? Do you think that could be figured out just by looking at yes. it? Yes. Yeah. I believe the Twilight Princess one, and perhaps the Twilight Princess one, and I think the one that, I know the one that we use in our graphics, which I think is old Hil- Hillian. Highly in. Um, <laughs> it's gonna take a few episodes. Um, oh yeah, it looks similar. You can to, technically read it. Yeah. It's not all exactly matchy matchy, but like the S looks like the S, the T looks like the T. Um, oh, a lot right. of these letters. Their forms reference the English, yeah. the Latin American character or whatever. Yeah, the B definitely looks like a B. But it is one to one replacements. Yep. So it's not like it, we're not talking Lord of the Rings language building here. This is really just for the fun Le- of it, letters. switching the graphics. Yep. Fair enough. Exactly. But it's still cool. Yeah. And I, I always like when things are readable, but not quite where you have to kind of squint at it and be like, what does that say? So yeah, I thought that was really cool. Um, what was that language the, called? Sorry. The Twilight princess, Twilight princess one. Hylian. Oh, it's so just so Hylian. That's, that's Hylian yep. now. Okay. Um, so there's ancient old Hylian and uh, new eventually we'll get to that ooh. one. Yeah. So, um, and then another cool thing about the Hylian language is that because as we've talked about, and as you know, the Wii version is like mirrored from the GameCube <gasps> version. Yes, you have course. to read it in a different direction. So in the Wii version, you read from right to left. And in the GameCube version, you would read from left to right. Kate, I'm going to use that as definitive proof that the GameCube version of Twilight Princess is, better. is the real one. <laughs> I will agree with you there. Anyone who says Twilight Princess is a Wii game, they're wrong. You're wrong. It's a GameCube game that got ported to the Wii, (laughs) and I think this proves it. Yep, pretty much. I Um, love playing Twilight Princess on the GameCube. Yeah, and um, now I'm going to have to play it. So the last time I played it, I did play it on Wii, and I'm going to have to go back to the GameCube so I can read everything. (laughs) Oh, hey, the, the Twilight Princess HD remake on the Wii U, I wonder which version that is. Which Ooh. horizontal swap that is, if it's mirrored or not. I don't know. I'll do some Googling later. Yeah. That Maybe might, on our break. I anyway. Don't know. Okay. Okay. And then the, uh, the fourth one that I found um, is New Highland. So this is used in the adult timeline just before the Great Flood. Oh, so maybe this is the one that oh. Wind Waker speaks. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I'm I not think, a well, here's the thing. Wind Waker has two different languages in it. It has what mm. everybody uses in the new flooded Hyrule or above Hyrule. And then Hyrule. it has the ancient and language. And the ancient language is, yeah, yeah, is the yeah. one that we can't see, I think. What makes it confusing is that, yeah, so a couple languages are kind of not officially referred to as ancient, but kind of just off the cuff. Oh, uh, it's, this it's one's the ancient, ancient language. language. Yeah. This one's the ancienter language. Yeah. So it's, you know, not an exact science. I am not a Hylian language mm-hmm. master by any means. Um, so the new Hylian replaces old Hylian. There's only a few speakers of old Hylian in terms of in the land of Wind Waker. Right. And it is the first script to include numerals in it, interestingly enough. Oh. So it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler in each game as you yeah. go through, I think. It's really fascinating. So all four of those 
are um, phonographic languages. So those are, you know, letter word based. And then we also have uh, logographic languages. Yeah. So those would be symbols that are used to represent words or parts of words. And that would be in Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. Those use the logographic languages. I am fascinated languages. right now. I, I know, don't right? know what you're talking about. I- um, <laughs> so yeah, I like wrote down a bunch of notes here. So the original font used in Link to the Past, which I'm sure you could find examples of online, apparently had designs based on Egyptian hieroglyphs, okay. which have religious meanings. You know and what? so because of that, they had yeah. to get that oh, out of there. Oh, well, that's because another Nintendo episode. Is very, yeah, is very sensitive to possible religious uh, tie-ins or yeah. Well, then, you know, in another Slack channel, you had mentioned, like, maybe we should do an episode talking about all the things that had to get changed because of accidental religious references and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and maybe, I'll, I'll maybe, touch on that maybe just a tiny okay. bit, but not a lot. That could also maybe just be like a good bonus episode or something. Yeah, yeah. Because anyway. there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff that um, music-wise and also graphic-wise that got, you know, removed or replaced for That's true. one reason or another. We'll speak to that in another episode, perhaps a little bit on this one. So anyway, yeah. So yeah, Link to the Past. I think, are there moments in text boxes in A Link to the Past? Both of us have not played this game that much. Yeah, so I don't know if I can answer your question. I think, I think I kind of recall some characters showing up in text boxes that were not Latin American characters or... or uh, you know, the alphabet, as you were saying, mm-hmm. but it's okay. If we don't know right now, it's okay. I just, maybe our listeners No, this know. was again, just stuff that I was researching yeah, for yeah. this episode. Let's keep going. I, like, I didn't mean to derail. So cool. No, no worries. Um, and then I have what's called the newest form, which I guess according to the, my sources didn't have like an official name yet, but that one is in link between worlds and breath of the wild. It's yet again, like each character corresponds to the English character. So it's readable just like twilight princess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm is highly and is readable. Um, and then this is where it gets weird. So, so anyway, th- that's the newest form and, and it'll be interesting to see if that newest form then continues with future games as well and see yeah. how it continues to adapt. Cause obviously they're, they're changing this a little bit with every game, which is really, really cool. Well, as we spoke to in our most recent bonus episode, mm-hmm. the, uh, placement of breath of the wild in the timeline now might be, uh, informing that this is is now the new language right right but it could always change after that too obviously. you're right they could we'll fast see. forward another two thousand years or exactly. whatever who knows anyway so it'd be super cool to see um so this is yeah where it gets weird so what i read is that in wind waker in wind waker's version of their language there is a distinction <laughs> between voiced and voiceless consonants like it gets real complicated so which would be like the b in bark versus the p in park it's like buh or puh okay or you know so you're either voicing oh it's coming from a vocal yeah yeah, from air so there's a difference between those two there's a difference between palatalized consonants mm-hmm. right from, um yeah. so like yeah yellow where your tongue is touching your palate and like doubled consonants like the two m's in roommate there's apparently a difference there like okay. i i would love to g- i didn't have the time to like really get into screenshots and stuff like that to see how crazy this does get but this is what i am reading about it so it was like blowing my mind and that's to say that there's a character for these different experiences yeah yeah this? there's yeah they're different characters based on these different that's kind of cool and what's consonants this, and sounds this new language again is is it called the new script or the new um basically the I'm brush of the wild to, language mm, i think this one is the n- new Hylian. New, new Hylian? I might sure. be wrong, but that's what I think it Works is. Works for now. And then, um, so this is the one that's like more suited to being written with a brush, brush strokes. And thing. you know, a lot of times New Hylian is written vertically, in Breath of the Wild at least. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I just, again, I couldn't believe, I, I need to spend even more time than I did looking this up. Wait a second, up. this is it's fascinating. Because we've spoken in the past about the kind of... Um, the, the culture merging that has happened in Legend of Zelda games. And mm-hmm. I've spoken to how much I enjoy that and uh, how in the early days it was basically Eastern European castle times. And then now it's kind of merged and it's many different cultures from all over the globe. Even this language that's in Breath of the Wild is sometimes being written horizontally, sometimes vertically. Mm-hmm. It's like some Eastern languages. Um, 
Uh, maybe now it's, it's, yes, it might be directly relating to what we would call our normal alphabet, you know, A through Z, Mm -hmm. but it's also has potentially characters for some of these sounds. Yeah. So I'm looking at a picture right now, for example. Um, so there are, uh, symbols for ka, ki, ku, ko, like, so they're, yeah, they're more sounds than than letters and that's in Wind Waker. So. Oh, in Wind Waker. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's cool. (laughs) Going back. My brain is still living there, but, uh, yeah. So very awesome. And then you also have, um, a couple like, I don't know, side languages, so to speak. (laughs) Um, for example, there's the sky writing, which uh, you see in Twilight Princess. So what? yeah, so in Twilight, and then this one only comes up a teeny bit. So you are looking for the sky characters. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that one is the written language of the Uka or however you yeah. say that. O O C C O O U U O O U U. Yep, exactly. Crazy, yep. crazy lady chickens. Uh, <laughs> crazy lady bald chickens. Oh, they're freaky. Um, that um, your buddy Shad can also read and interpret that because he's the one that kind of gives you the book and he's like hey I'm trying to find these characters but they mean nothing well they mean something to me but I'm trying to figure them out and blah 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 so that one is similar to Hylian and I guess there's a theory that Hylians may have like copied skywriting since obviously cool. skywriting would have been older that's cool that they or- kind of copied parts of that over over yes. time so if you if you look at um, the sky writing um, on the internet, you can see mm-hmm. it's pretty similar. Well, to if the, enough to Ukus and enough Helians fall in love, Hylians fall in love with each other. That would look horrifying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> just bald. I tell you, those languages start people. to merge. Oh, no. That's I don't know about that. What's going on? And then another one, um, which we might touch on in our next episode, is the language of the Minish. So that's another, oh, yet another language. The Pekori. Yeah, exactly. So that one's interesting because you don't really get those are just like syllables that are written on the screen or like word fragments. They're in like English characters. Really? Oh. But it's just like nonsense. It's words. almost like opinion for Chinese. It's like the it's English or it's A through Z making a sound, but that right. represents a different word. Right. Exactly. I see. So it's not So you can like read it. Pani ma mu nu. But it doesn't mean anything. I see. Exactly. Um so in that one, Link needs the Jabbernut to learn how to speak their language. As and you then do. what is interesting about that one is, you know, obviously in the English version of the game, it's just gobbledygook. But apparently in the German, French, and Italian versions, it is that respective language, but written backwards. Huh. Weirdly enough. Yeah. So I thought that was a really cool fact. And that's a different thing from, from one game to another that I never would have known if I had not researched for imagine, these games. Imagine those uh, localizers that were working, like they're working on the German one, they're working on the, you know, like, oh, what should we do? I don't uh, know, Joe, put it backwards. The Joe. <laughs> of course, his name is Joe, too. And <laughs> I don't know. Germany. <laughs> I don't, yeah, right, Joe right. Germany. So anyway, that is cool. That's a neat little uh, tidbit, neat little fact. Yeah, so those were like the different languages that I found. So I think it'll be really cool, like I said, to go back and... And play the games again, looking at it in a whole different way. Um, And I'm pretty sure you can find translations of basically all of these. I don't, I'm I'm not sure if Ocarina can be translated directly or not based on like the characters in that one. I'll have to check that out. I don't know offhand or if it's just like kind of I believe it can. To my knowledge, we use that font on our graphics oh, yeah, you and said I that. type them in <laughs> well, maybe I'm doing it inappropriately but I type them in one to one which okay. is a lot of fun to see interesting I should like watch you do that sometime <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do a twitch stream or something of cool. my, fo- my photoshop skills when I'm building all these graphics very cool which we actually got a feedback on that a few months ago someone said that they really liked the featured images and I was so oh, yeah. touched to hear that our podcast ironically looks really good <laughs> <laughs> So watch it on YouTube too. Um, So that is the stuff that I had for the languages. And Uh then I also had some stuff for like symbols and emblems, which is. What if we go to break and we do it on the other side of the break? Okay. Because it's perfect. Perfect timing. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to break. Excellent. I'll see you in just a bit. I'm bad at realizing when it's time to go to break. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. (laughs) I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Bye. 
everyone. I'm Leona Liu. And I'm Jeff Norman. And we're the hosts of a new show called the Tea Fix Podcast. Now we love drinking tea. And we love talking about drinking that tea. So we decided that we should make a show about drinking tea. And so we did. The Tea Fix Podcast. Now, in this show, we talk about some of our favorite teas, flavors, and cultivars. We do deep dives on all the different types of teas and many ways to make and store tea. Each recording, we enjoy a new tea from our personal stash. And we try not to get too tea drunk in the process. A new episode comes out every other Thursday. And you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram at The Tea Fix. All right, everyone. We'll see you there. Hey everyone, David Geisler here, and I am very excited to share that we have just launched our Patreon page for another Zelda podcast. Patreon is a great way for creators to grow their content, and we're really looking forward to using this space as a way to say thank you to our listeners. We'd love to have your support, and we've put together some rewards that we're pretty excited about. Things like additional uncut bonus content, custom wallpapers, and of course, early access to all of our episodes. So if you'd like, after the show, head on over to our page at patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find a link to the page in our show notes. Thank you very much. Welcome back. We are back here at another Zelda podcast in our languages and logos episode discussing languages, symbols, emblems, all the stuff that maybe you did or did not notice in the games. Based on a lot of our uh, listener feedback, a lot of people notice and care about the languages. Yeah. Um, And when we were talking about it before we went to break, I was talking about how I kind of noticed it, but that I think I'll appreciate it a lot more now going back and and checking it out. I nerd out on it too. Well, I nerd out on it aesthetically. I've never really dug into the lore. And so I'm learning a lot today. Yeah, I mean, same (laughs) when I was researching this, because I always thought it was cool as well. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Something's written up there. Okay, Mm -hmm. whatever. And now I'm just like, holy cow, the amount of effort that goes into the design of the language is crazy town. But I shouldn't be surprised, honestly. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, right. I mean, I don't like, again, I don't know if it's Lord of the Rings level of, you know, phonetics and a things bu- yeah, being built, completely built language. syntax and all that. But yeah. nevertheless, it's pretty cool. It's getting there. In, it kind in of some of them. It like sounds Wind like Waker, it. it was getting there. Um, so now moving on to just kind of like different symbols that you can find in the game, stuff like that. Um, what we kind of touched on, and I said I would kind of mention it a little bit, but we can always save more details for a longer episode or a Patreon episode is that the Christian cross comes up sometimes or did. Yeah. And then uh, they kind of had to nix that Mm -hmm. one as well. So like the book of magic that you find has a cross on the cover. Well, apparently when they were building the Hyrule fantasy, as our listeners now know, the first legend of Zelda Mm -hmm. was called, um, it actually was called the Bible in the code. I, I saw that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that uh, <laughs> that apparently was a little awkward for the American release. So do you know what? I have a theory. Yeah. Uh, the cross showing up on Link's shield, this book being called the Bible. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was you know it was, it was from a Japanese perspective, and they were trying to take the kind of castle times of Eastern European kind of stuff. Yeah. And those are the kinds of symbols and titles of those things that were coming along with that culture. Mm-hmm. And so maybe it didn't have any religious oh, I don't think it messaging. Did. I don't think it did. It was did. just like, well, that's what happens in that culture. Yeah. But once that game comes to America or Europe or other cultures, mm-hmm. it might have slight, it's not, it might have slightly different meanings. It's right. like how an, uh, an American culture can misinterpret a religious content of, well, I mean, I'll just say it like a Japanese situation or something like that mm-hmm. perspective. Or uh, the swastika. Which you know yeah. is not is a, it's a Buddhist symbol. It doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means. So yeah. there's a lot of yeah different interpretations of symbols. Yeah, I don't think it was meant to be a religious association either. In the in when you know, they were the like Japanese writing game. the code. Yeah, but once it once it became a thing that other people were going to see, the sensitivity increased. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. So there's the cross there. Um, reading through my notes, mm-hmm. and then there's also. Um, we can go into the race emblems, okay. so, which kind of will tie into what we were just talking about. So you have the three 
races, so to speak. So you have the Kokiri, the forest yes. people. You have the Gorons, oh. the fire people, and then the Zoras, the water people. Um, oh, I lied. You don't have three. You have more than three. And then you have the Sheka and the Gerudo. Yes. So the forest and the fire and the water, you get the, um, I forget what exact, the not the coin. You don't call them coins. It's the. What? Maybe they just call them medallions or gems. Medallions. But yeah. That's what I was trying to. Sure. For some reason, my brain could not process the word medallion. It's all right. <laughs> so, you know, you obviously see those in like Ocarina of Time and the jewels that you end up getting. Those those symbols are kind of throughout many of the games. They look the same. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that I thought were the most interesting because I couldn't find a ton of background information on those first three were the Sheka or Sheka. I don't know. I've always said Sheka and I think sure. Zelda says Sheka Slate in Breath of the Wild. Okay. Sheikah then. Um, that one and the Gerudo. I think those were the two more interesting emblems. The Sheikah to go and the into. Gerudo have a very, very interesting narrative uh, genealogy. Right, right, and, exactly. And then now that we have the Yiga clan in Breath of the Wild, yep. I, I got my mind got blown the other day when I found out what their connection to the Sheikah could be. It's like anyway, a weird tree. Super cool. Branches on the same tree. I never so, thought I was going to get this excited about lore, but it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so the Sheikah one is obviously the eye with the tear. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I was like, if I ever got a Legend of Zelda tattoo, I wonder, I think I would involve that in some kind of yeah. way. I don't know how, and I don't know if I will ever do something like that, but that would be, I think that's like the coolest looking emblem. Or It is a cool emblem. And I yeah. think when you first acquire something like that, isn't it the Sheikah mirror? And it almost, I always thought, I never saw that as a tear, an eye that's crying. Mm. I love that. I didn't think about that until you just said it. Yeah. Um, apparently what I read is that the tear symbolizes the willingness of the Sheikah to go to any lengths to okay. protect the people that they are supposed to protect. And they certainly do. So yeah. Um, so that first appeared in Ocarina of Time in the Shadow Temple. Mm -hmm. So it's in this. Uh, uh, does uh, does Impa have it on her body at all? Her person? I thought so. I think all the Sheikah might have yeah, that yeah. icon somewhere. They all, I think they all wear it. Yeah. Um, but and, anyway, yeah. So spirit, so shadow temple. So yeah. So it's on the lens of truth. It's on the gossip stones, which makes sense. It's like you right. know, the eye that sees everything too. You can maybe interpret it that way. Hmm. Um, it's on the mask of truth and ocarina. Mask of Truth. That's the one I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Um, in Wind Waker, it is, you can, it's not like really apparent, but there's a small symbol on the ship in the Forsaken Fortress. If you can really? find that. Yeah, little really Easter eggs. Uh, so it's there and it's um, in the Master Sword room as Could well. Could that mean anything? Sheikah in the Forsaken Fortress. Or Forsaken or Forbidden Fortress? Forsaken I forget. Forsaken Fortress. It's Forsaken. on the ship. So Forsaken implies... Uh, that it was something else before. Mm -hmm. Well, it's on the ship that's inside it though. So it's like maybe oh. the Chica sailed their ship and used that Fascinating. place as their home for a while before it was taken over. I don't know. I don't hmm. know that there's like an official story with that reference. It's just kind of <laughs> boop there. This is awakening something inside me. I want to learn more about this now. <laughs> that was me and like looking or reading about the languages and yeah. stuff like that. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, Cause I remember seeing the ship in the Forsaken Fortress. I don't know if I saw the symbol or if I would have even thought about it. I want to go look now. But it's so like not in the rest of Wind Waker that it's weird that they just kind of put it in a couple of places. Yeah, the Sheikah are not present anywhere. Perhaps Impa is in the stained glass, but I don't think so. Do we ever see? It's apparently, yeah, apparently that symbol is somewhere in the Master Sword room. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's, okay. it's somewhere right. in there. I I should probably yeah. look up where exactly it is, but how about you guys go look for yourselves? Tweet us at another Zelda pod. <laughs> Send us screenshots. Um, Heck yeah. In Twilight Princess, this is what's interesting is that it's on Zelda's cloak. The symbol. In Twilight Princess, uh -huh. really? It's on she so she's protected by the Sheikah. Yep. Yep. Because yep. they they've been tied with the royal family, obviously, going mm -hmm. back to Ocarina of Time. Um, it's on the howling stones as well. Yep, yep. Um, in Skyward Sword, Impa's wearing it there too. And then um, their gossip. Kate, pardon me. Where is Impa in Skyward Sword? I'm having a hard time remembering. Is she on Skyloft? I'm sorry. I just got a look from Kate. Like I don't think. Oh no. man. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. Oh I'm man. Gonna look I can it up. Because uh, Impa, Impa is interesting to me. Impa I'm gonna, pops up everywhere. Well, she's in every Zelda game. She's even in the first one in the instruction booklet, which I spoke to a few episodes oh, yeah. ago. But she was just 
Zelda's nurse in the early days. And then by the time Ocarina of Time came along, not in the chronological timeline, but in the release order, they decided to have this nurse character become more of a uh, guardian character. And that's Mm -hmm. where the Sheikah thing really started to come around. And actually, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, Impa is present in both of those games, but she's, again, only Zelda's nurse. And in Breath of the Wild, Impa is Sheikah. She's just super old. She's just very old, which... Makes sense um, when you think about the timeline thing that we're suppose... going to talk about. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, Another yeah. episode. Um, so in Skyward Sword, Impa goes through the gate of time to the future to protect her mortal incarnation and help her future incarnation remember her former life. Whoa, dang. Holy cow. Didn't know that. Um, so yeah, she's, okay. she's in there. Um, okay, okay. Impa, Skyward Sword. I don't remember coming across her, but we're Skyward probably going to play little... that game. We're going to have to sooner or later too. So I'm we will remember because I haven't played that one in quite a while myself. Oh man, it's it was a frustrating one for me. <laughs> I love so many Zelda games. That one was frustrating for That's me. That's going to be your Majora's Mask for me. It like, just might be. Yep. I can't wait mm-hmm. to get back to Majora's Mask. I was talking to Leona about it a week or two ago, and I was like, actually, really getting fond memories of Majora's Mask again. Ooh, I don't know what that we'll means. See. Let me offer this. <laughs> I know we're talking about symbols right now, but let me offer this. Yeah, yeah. Consider. When, when we do go back to Majora's Mask, consider that that was the first project that IG Enuma really had the director's chair on. You know, he was kind of, we quickly, we could say he was a co-director for mm-hmm. Ocarina, but that was the first one where Miyamoto wasn't as involved or at all. And IG really got to, IG Enuma really got to do his thing. He went on to do Wind Waker. And now, of course, he was the main developer for um, Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. And so if 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 anything, IG Enuma is an artist who doesn't mind <clears throat> creatively experimenting with the form. Oh, sure. So consider that when we go into Majora's Mask. I hope that gives you a bit more of an uh, uh, open point of view. Honestly, if it weren't just for the whole, you have three days to do things and I know yeah. you can reset it, it, I'm sure I would enjoy the game much more, mm-hmm. but we'll see. That's fine. Once we get so it. Go, go watch the movie um, Edge of Tomorrow first. Uh, live, die, repeat. Oh, yeah. And then play Majora's Mask and, and you'll be fine. That. You'll be okay. in the right headspace. I have a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I was derailed, but anyway. Okay, so, um, and then Twilight still has the gossip and Sheikah stones there, too. Yes, Those are frequent throughout almost all the games, if not all the games. Um, and then, obviously, the ties in Breath of the Wild are very obvious. Your Sheikah slate, um, which the symbol is on the slate. And then um, it's... There is some mention of how, like, when you get the information onto it, it kind of, yeah. it's the tier. So the, the, the script, I don't know what to call it, the, mm-hmm. the words that are coming down, the characters that come down, the that become a drip, that mm-hmm. drips into your, that gives you a, a firmware update. Yep. Um, uh, those all say things. And also the the wor- the scripts that are on the edges of the shrines all say things. Many of them have to do with in-game things. There's a couple Easter eggs. There's like, I think there's Crazy. definitely like a take this, it's dangerous to go alone Easter egg on oh, one of the shrines. Nice. But, um, but that is all, all those characters are real, are, were put there. They're not randomized. They're not Lipsum Orum. Okay. They're actual uh, things. And That's also it. I thought about it in Breath of the Wild as you were speaking. Breath of the Wild is maybe one of the first games that I can think of where Link is now protected by the Sheikah as well. Being, you know, he, mm-hmm. so often it's really, he's experiencing the Sheikah as they protect Zelda. Right. But now they're protecting him by giving him the Sheikah slate and all of this. Yeah. There's a large Sheikah presence in Breath of the Wild. So much so that we have a reverse faction. Yes, the Yiga. So that's very interesting. How, oh, yeah, it's it's inverted on the Yiga clan. So I'm very embarrassed that for months, maybe a year, I didn't notice. Oh, that. I pro- I'm sure I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, the Yiga symbol is the is the uh, Shika symbol upside down. So yep. now the tear is going up, mm-hmm. like a middle finger. I just realized. <laughs> Screw they you, Shika. Any orders? Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah, and um, Impa has it on her her hat. I'm looking at a mm-hmm. picture of her right mm-hmm. now in Breath of the Wild. So, and you're right. She is like the one telling Link how to go about everything. She is uh, his guide in Breath of the Wild. So a bit like, a bit like Impa in uh, Ocarina. Yep. Go to the mountain. Well, no, that Zelda's gone. Here, you listen to me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You listen to me now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where'd um, she go? And what's interesting are that villains are often associated with eye symbols that are close to the Sheikah design. Tell me about this. Um, that's all I had. Oh, very good. Cool. <laughs> no, I was I like, think, ooh, tell me more. I think it's just nope. that they have they have symbols that are very close. I, d- I wasn't able to find like any kind of significant lore or story, hmm. but it's intriguing to see. Maybe they're factions that have 
drifted away or something yeah. like that. Um, and then um, going from there to the Gerudo, that one apparently is um, the back of a king cobra. It's like the pattern on a snake, which I can is see interesting. That. Yeah, and I didn't realize that either till I read it. I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's I can cool. see that. Um, so the original version of the Gerudo symbol was similar to an Islamic symbol, which is another kind of religious tie in that they're like, oops, never mind. Um, yeah, so, yeah. which was like the half or the crescent moon. Yes. That you can, I think, still see. In the, well, in original cartridge, in original. it's obviously there. We don't yeah. have system updates with those things. Right. But I believe that they modded it for the 3DS re release. So, yeah. For after Octarina. the, yeah, after the original cartridges. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was changed. Um, and then obviously the Gerudo symbol appears on Ganon all the time because he is a Gerudo. So it's like, Gerudo um, are weird. it's on his sword, it's on his cloak, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. So what do you mean by they're weird? Well, I mean, cause they're not enemies, but they have enemy roots, you know, mm-hmm. and they're almost, they're almost third faction enemies in Ocarina. They're not necessarily Link's friend. Yeah. And cause they do lock him in a room. They lock him in a room. Breath of the Wild is very similar, but they become your friend eventually if you meet certain standards. <laughs> you cross dress a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um, so the Gerudo, they're not evil. Right. But uh, they're definitely Ganon, very Ganon, independent. Ganondorf, yeah, Ganondorf in Ocarina was definitely there. He calls them that he is referred to as the Gerudo King. Yeah. Before he's revealed to be Ganon. Yeah. So maybe his human form was just hanging out. Oh, also Gerudo, it's always there aren't males. Right. It's always all females. And I think Ganondorf was the only male I've ever mm-hmm. heard of to I believe be so. in the Gerudo clan. Well, until Breath of the Wild and Link came along, but again, that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really of the clan either. That's not what I you mean. Know, but like the, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, right. No, no. Yeah, I get it. He Sorry. Becomes yeah, so the Gerudo are strange because they now they're by the time you get to Breath of the Wild, we have the Gerudo powering one of the beasts um mm-hmm. with I forget her name, Yub, Yuba. Yub, the the very uh well spoken, the 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 uh, very confident uh with um, abs of steel. Yeah, what's her guardian? Is yeah. she a guardian? I think so. No, the guardians are the robots. <laughs> What are the protectors? You know, Daruk and stuff like that. What are their names? Champions. Oh, uh, yeah. Champions. Um, yeah, they do not like Ganon in Breath of the Wild. Oh, I guess it's oh. been hundreds of thousands of years. Maybe, just oh, maybe, yeah. he betra- Ganondorf betrayed the Gerudo to become Ganon in Ocarina. Then we fast forward a couple hundred years. So they're, they're their own faction now, I think, in Breath of the Wild. I need more books. I want there to be a Legend of Zelda novel. So to speak to that point, um, Dark Horse Comics just released the Legend of Zelda encyclopedia, and it's beautiful. Yeah. They made it look like a golden cartridge. Oh, yeah. I was seriously considering reaching out to them to see if we could do like a review episode or something to take a look at it. Oh, cool. I don't know. But who knows if that'll come together, but I think we might do that. That will be part of my collection at some point in time. Yeah. It was like in my shopping cart, and I was like, Ooh. I'm just going to wait a little more. I see. I see. So that, yeah, I it will be It would be, be awesome to that. do a full episode on that book. But anyway. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Maybe it'd be neat to even interview. I, okay, I digress. I digress. Well, I don't have too, too much more. That's okay. Um, but we can mention the wing crest. Obviously, that's a very, very important symbol or emblem of Legend of Zelda. And it's so funny because just like it took you forever to notice the upside down tear for the Yiga, it took me forever to know it was a bird. What's a bird? Oh, the, the wing red. Crest. Yeah. Okay. Right. I was right. like, it's oh, it's shield? just lines. So like oh, it just really? looks like a design to me. Like I'm the person where it took forever to see like the arrow and the FedEx logo and like uh, everything. Like negative I don't space. Get that? Yeah. Um, so when's the first time that that wing crest shows up? Is it Ocarina or was it a link to the past? Oh, I feel like it's Ocarina because I think that they designed gosh. that thing from sc- the Hylian Hylian shield was designed from scratch. I think for Ocarina to be on that box art. And the, well, and the wing crest is like a combination of the goddess crest and the Hylian crest. It's kind of a match up of those two things. Cause I think one of them has the Triforce within it and the other one doesn't. You're it's right. just kind of more wings. You're so, right. Um, yeah, you're right. That goes back to Skyward Sword lore. Oh yeah. Lore wise. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Cause it's a shape of a bird for mm-hmm. how they get around. Um, Whoa, I love it. Yeah. This is weird. It's the official crest of the royal family. Makes sense. The. 
it is in the shape of a bird. So I didn't have too much information on that one, just that it's cool to see it in all the games. And that's kind of where the story of it originated, at least was Skyward Sword, which appears to be the origination of a whole bunch of things. Well, of course, that by design. Yeah. And then I, um, next week when we speak about Minish Cap, Minish Cap was when it came out, it was said to it was positioned as the prequel as the first game ever oh yeah yeah yeah. and then skyward sword happened and they had to do a little bit of retconning yeah. but we'll Just talk kidding, about this is the first one ever <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that in the next episode yeah and then i mean there's the triforce what is there to say about the triforce that's just you know yet another one of the big symbols emblems mm-hmm. um it's on the it's on link and zelda and ganon's hands it's on master sword it's on shield it's everywhere um it's on the mirror of twilight um, I didn't know at first which triangle signified which goddess. If you're really careful, you can technically tell by looking at the character's hand. Yeah, things. and I guess I didn't put that together mm. like I should have. I Yet can't another say that I. Thing. I can't say that I remember. I just know that I've noticed that the shapes they're in different spots on on Zelda, Ganondorf's, and Link's. Yeah, hands. so like the top one is for power. Okay, that's so that's in. Link, and then the bottom left is Nehru. And then uh, the bottom right is Ferrari. So, yeah. So cool. Oh, wait. Oh, so Ganondorf is up front, huh? Yep. And then Link is down, Ganondorf. right? Yes. Ferrari? Yep. For courage, yes. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Is there anything that, any kind of symbol that. <sighs> no, I went into this all you've noticed? thinking that I knew nothing. I went into this nerding out about putting. I think old Hillian in our graphics when mm-hmm. I was doing our, when I was building our like icon and technically we have a little statement at the bottom of our show graphic, which is not a secret at all. Um, but I did it only in, I think old Hillian. Mm-hmm. It's really, it just says like season one or something like that. You know oh, what I okean. mean? But I did not put it in actual ABCD, but you know, that kind of thing. And I'll update it in season two. It'll be fun to do. Cool. Um, um, that was the only thing is I would kind of just nerd it out on Zelda fonts and that they were, I knew that they were, uh, translatable and there's a couple websites out there that let you type something in and they'll make little PNGs for mm-hmm. you of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's really all I knew. I was aware of course, of the different language in wind waker. We talked about that a little bit in our wind waker review episode, mm-hmm. but I did not realize that there were, um, evolutions of these languages, old Hillian ancient. And, you know, uh, that was really cool it's to hear. Really about. cool to look back on. Yeah. Um, and I've always, there wasn't too much to go into in terms of like the uh, medallions, the symbols on those. I guess right. I would be kind of interested to see where some of those designs came from. Some are more obvious than others. Like, um, I don't know, like why is the forest one what it is? It's just not all of them necessarily seem to pertain to their element or their mm-hmm. tribe or something. So I don't know. I'd be I've, interested to see that. I wasn't able to find too much about the design process of those, but it'd be cool to maybe there's something in the encyclopedia. Perhaps. But I have not read yet. Perhaps we'll find out. So I would like to hear our listeners feedback on some of that stuff. If they have ideas or if they know certain things like I'm sh- I know there are symbols and stuff that I didn't cover either because I wasn't able to find too much information or just yeah. because I didn't have time to, you know, really get into the the info, but yeah, if there's something that I missed that's really really cool, please let us know. I'm sure there's something I I glossed over or Well, I'd like catch. to know about um and again, you can tweet us at another Zelda pod. Um uh for me, I found the, you know, as much as I enjoy Twilight Princess, as much as we enjoy Twilight Princess, um, I actually feel that that typeface is kind of the most ugly of them all. Really? The super swirly, slippery stuff uh, doesn't do much for me. And I actually think like Old Hillian, what I believe is Old Hillian based on this conversation, Uh uh, is very beautiful. But I actually think that the Breath of the Wild language or typeface is the most beautiful. So I'd like to hear what our listeners think about all the different languages and which ones they prefer as well. That'd be very cool. Yeah. I like the Twilight Princess one. I don't know. Maybe because to me, it's like so easy to interpret that that's why I like it. I don't, but the design of it doesn't bother me at all. I think I just like the blockiness of the Breath of the Wild uh, Mm -hmm. font. And then of course, Old Hillian. We never agree on anything, do we? (laughs) Well, that's what makes this show good. We agree that we like Zelda. (laughs) Two sides of the same coin. Perhaps. Or the same medallion, if you... Yeah, right, (laughs) right. 
That's, that's what, a, that's that's a callback. That's what that is. Oh, is it? Is that how that works? When I didn't know what medallion was, yes. Kate, if people want to talk to me directly about uh, any of these kinds of typefaces or, I mean, they weren't called typefaces then, but if you download a font, of course, yeah. um, they can tweet me at Raptor Paint or find me on Instagram at Raptor Paint. Mm-hmm. And I am on Instagram at I only take cat pics where I take Almost only cat pics. <laughs> that's some other pics too. Uh, that's really it. I'm just on Instagram. And run so. data. You post run data. I do. Which is cool. It I bore like everyone with if, my running. Well, what is, so you, what is that? It's like, it gives you uh, like, uh, you have to, like there's some accountability by posting or something. Yeah, like, I guess I just do it to be like, hey, I'm doing more than just sitting on my butt. Look at <laughs> look at the evidence that I'm doing more than sitting on my butt, which Fair is enough. most of what I'm doing. Okay. But it's like sometimes I don't sit on my butt. Here, people. Look, I did it. Look, I, I'm proving it. I enjoy sharing my bike rides occasionally yeah. on like Facebook and stuff. Like when they, I, have a, I use Map My Ride and it actually literally shows the GPS yeah, route. Yeah, That's yeah. always kind of fun to share. Uh, anyway, people, if they want to talk to us about typefaces and all the different languages and symbols and maybe they have ideas or questions and we could return to this topic even in season two yeah um they can tweet the show at another zelda pod or find us on instagram at another zelda podcast they can go to our website another zelda podcast.com or find us on facebook if they want to really get into a conversation with us yeah send us messages um by searching another zelda podcast on facebook and that might be all i need to say for now we're on itunes and google play if you're listening to this on youtube right now if you're listening to this on google play or itunes get over there on youtube and and you can watch slash listen to us over there we're everywhere we're almost everywhere we're everywhere we're almost everywhere we're broadcasting in space it's fine (laughs) yep excellent we're everywhere all right right, well i think that's about it for now so we will meet again and talk about minish cap in our next episode in two weeks. Yes, so I will see you then. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Uh- <laughs>